The fourth game in eight days for UConn women's basketball has the 3-0 Huskies on their home court. A 3-1 Xavier squad is the opponent today here for their first Big East game of the season. And hello, everybody from Stores. Alan Bestwick with Megan Como. Thanks for joining us for UConn Women's Basketball. The Huskies tip off this one off a very solid performance Thursday night against Creighton, a 33-point victory led by Olivia Nelson Adota. And Meg, there was a lot to like about Olivia's game. Wow! Right from the opening tip, Olivia just had it going on. I mean, and there was a, there was a look about her, just a presence. And Gino noticed it, and, when, and God knows when he sees that in his kids before the games, he knows they're going to play well. That was the first play of the game. She was ready to go. And when she's knocking down jumpers from the top of the key, you know she's feeling confident. Look at this, the double team on her right. She takes the defense a little bit more right and then spins back hard left. There's the nice spin going to the left. She was perfect from the floor. But I think the key for Olivia to go from good to great, she's got to put those terrific scoring outings to back to back. So let's see how she does here today. Uh, Olivia looked good in morning practice, draining those same kind of shots for sure. We've talked a lot about the newcomers to this team, a lot of the freshmen. But another newcomer who's made some really solid contributions to this team is Avina Westbrook. What have you seen from Avina? You know what I see? I, I see maturity. You know, uh, she transferred here. She hasn't played in two years. So, you know, they jokingly call her the mom of the team. And, <laughs> and what does a mom do? She takes care of her kids. This, this young lady is going to do whatever she has to do. She's happy. She's where she wants to be. Hey, she she led Tennessee in scoring a couple years ago. That doesn't matter. She doesn't care about scoring. She'll play defense. She'll pass. She'll rebound. She'll do whatever she has to do. She just wants to win a national championship. Well, Avina and the Huskies come into this one having scored 92 and 80 points in their first two Big East games while holding their opponents to 27% shooting from the floor. We'll find out how the Huskies face against the Musketeers of Xavier. Coming up next at Gamble. That's some pretty mind-boggling numbers around this UConn program when you stop to dig into it. Shooting for 217th straight victory over an unranked opponent today. 2012, the last time the Huskies lost to an unranked team. Looking for a 997th straight game without a back-to-back -back loss. And that last one at Gamble. 308 years since 93-94. Wow. That's outrageous, especially when I, I remember actually playing in the first game <laughs> yes. in this building. Back in 1990. So Gino Oriama getting ready to lead his squad in search of uh, yet another victory to add to his total. Today's starting lineups presented by Subaru. Same starting five as for every game this season for UConn. Beckers, Williams, Baccarat, Westbrook, and uh, Nelson Adota. The two to watch for Xavier, Nia Clark, number one, and number 21, Ariana Gray. They are the scorers. They are the stealers. They are the rebounders for Melanie Moore in her second season heading this uh, Musketeer program. And you saw her mouthing to her player, rebound. Well, that was a big key when you and I talked to her last night. Rebounding is going to be critical for Xavier here this afternoon. More on the basically three keys Coach Moore said her team needed to accomplish today to make a game of it with these Huskies. But we're underway with Nelson Madota winning the tip to Makarot. And Beckers will handle the ball for the Huskies wearing their home lights here at Gamble Pavilion. <laughs> Interesting start for Makarov. She was one of the players we talked about, just hadn't been into a great flow offensively. Yeah. She's gonna change that. Huskies with a defensive trap. Westbrook and Beckers force a throwaway. As uh, Anna Makarov, what Gino talked about is he wanted to see her knock down more threes when the game was still being decided. Drives the bucket and drawing the foul is Kristen Williams. That shot from Mark Rock out and had a toe on the line, so it is a two. But still, you get the point. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, I like this play too. I, I like, and I know Gino's got to be happy to see Kristen Williams attack the basket. For the first time she touched the ball, sometimes Kristen could just settle for, you know, taking a jump, even if it might be contested. She is so good when she gets the ball to the rim. And again, foul, get a foul on the other team and get herself to the free throw line. 
Christian was 5 of 5 from the free throw line in the Thursday night win over Creighton here. The Huskies again going to apply some front court pressure on the Xavier offense. Oh, come on, get over here. Way to slow things down. They have such a deep bench for UConn. This is it's important for them to be able to tinker and work on different things with these different lineups. Here's Nia Clark. Cut off. Here's Dunham. Five to shoot. Up from the outside and off the mark from Ayana Townsend. And the Huskies run to Williams. Knocked away, out of bounds. Nice retreat by Townsend after the miss to make the defensive play. What a great hustle play by Townsend to run back and to get a hand on this ball. Nice clean block. The other thing that Xavier doesn't want to give up is the easy transition hoops. Good hustle. Side, Nelson Dota got position on Townsend and up and in for her first points. Yeah, she felt her on her high where side they, and then she did a, another really good job of just sealing her on her back so she had the open leg. Tied up bar. Possession arrow will have the ball remain in the hands of Xavier. You can still hear Gino Oriema coaching it up like crazy. We talked about it the other night. He doesn't let a play go by that he's not screaming instruction. I believe your phrase was coaching his brains out. <laughs> Beckers intercepts the inbound pass. Kristen no! no! Williams found herself too open there. Yeah. Yes, yes, too much time. Yes, 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 yes. Try to get it over to Gray on the far side of the court with good defensive position by the Huskies. The three keys that Melanie Moore talked to us about when we spoke with her yesterday for her team, shot selection, which would be key to containing UConn's transition game. And that's always critical with anyone who plays UConn. of Xavier and out of bounds to the Huskies. A foul was called on Ayanna Townsend. Uh, UConn starting slowly this season from beyond the arc. Something they'll look to see if they can remedy today. The three-point shot and scoring is such an important factor in today's basketball. Westbrook. Just raised the rim on the way by. So, at this point in the game, the Huskies 0 for 2 from beyond the arc. Musketeers 0 for 2 from the floor. We're done with the ball. Nelson Agoda with the rebound. Makarov gets Gray in the air. Gray knocks the ball out of Makarov's hands off Anna, out of bounds. Yeah, that was a really Thank good you. job by Xavier to get back defensively. And then the savvy play to knock the ball off of Makarov. See the nice crossover, she gets to the rim. Ball off of Makarov. Xavier ball. Satterfield gets the shot up, contested. Rebound to Beckers, who has to fight off. One, now two Xavier players. Cutting Kristen Williams draws the foul. What a great cut by Williams. And a terrific find by Beckers. I mean, that's just heads up play. Look, she called it with her left hand. You see that? She said, go. Nice cut. I mean, that's what a point guard does. When you talk about players making other people better, that's a terrific example of Becker seeing a space and nice job by Williams to read her. So Townsend goes out of the game with having picked up two fouls already. 
Well, that's not good for Xavier. They need the bottom inside. Side play contested on her shot. It's Williams. Side does. Nice to the Dota with the spin and the soft right hander. Again, it's the poise and the patience when she caught the ball to look at the defense, see what she had, and then spun accordingly. Steal by Beckers. Westbrook. Timeout, Xavier. Four minutes into the ball game. I would say it's fair to say the Huskies' offense hasn't necessarily been pretty, but they find themselves up 12-0 on the strength of excellent defense. UConn with a dozen lead. 12-0 UConn, four minutes into the game. And let's take a look at Kumo's court vision now, brought to you by Yale New Haven Health. So this under out of bounds play, right? Okay, now watch Nelson Adota, okay? You're gonna wanna watch her. As the play begins, the guards, okay, they, one goes to the corner, one goes to this corner, then she flashes down, right? She's gonna be right here. Now, watch the defense on the high side. She catches the ball. The ball goes perfectly away from the defense. The de defender was on her right hip, which is where you want her when you're on that side of the floor. Just catch, keep seal her on your back and score. And that's that's incumbent on the passer as well to make that read. Where's the defender? Yeah, the, I mean, the good passers are gonna throw the ball to their post player away from the defense, leading them to where they need to go. So there's the scoring line on Olivia early in this one. Paige Beckers also with two rebounds, two assists, and two steals in the opening four minutes. Aggressive defense again by the Huskies, and the error pass misses Mia Clark. Makarot. Beckers to Nelson Adota. Wow. Beautiful pass from Beckers. Again, more offense coming from their full court press. Offensive foul. And see here the steal, and then watch Beckers just sees it coming, looks away. I mean, you could see the blue jerseys. Watch Beckers go. They followed her head. And good job running the floor by Olivia. In the post again. Spins to the right. <laughs> she is in a zone right now. That's eight points already for Nelson Adota. And the errant pass by the Huskies' defensive pressure. And another turnover by the Musketeers. She has to scream for you. Great shot by Makara. Nice to see her knock down the three, but a perfect pass from Beckers with the ball fake and then the pass. Tied up ball. That'll be UConn's on the possession arrow. Melanie Moore looking for answers from her ball club as uh, these opening five minutes of this game have not gone their way. It's 19 0. Good E, good E. second call as you heard on the Huskies and so the turnover for UConn that was good defense that time by Xavier just packing it in their zone and trying to keep the ball away from Nelson Adota you can see the frustration Just knocked out of bounds by Nelson Adota. That'll stay with Xavier. 20-second shot clock. Satterfield. And the Musketeers get on the board. 
Westbrook gets tied up. Good defensive retreat there. That was Karen Gross who got back and got two hands on the ball. This job by Xavier to get back. Really good hands by Gross. That's a tough play to make on the move. All the way through, but had Nelson to go there, trying to block the rebound, and a foul drawn by Sarah Lyon-Decker. Xavier responded to their coach's timeout a moment ago and had a couple good defensive possessions. And then came down on offense. Satterfield scored, and now they're at the line. So here's Sarah Lyon-Decker, veteran junior from the Cincinnati area. Foul was on Anna Makarov, her first. A little bit late. Beckers was open for a while before she got the ball. Ball went off of a foot and out of bounds, so it'll be the Huskies' ball. They'll have a 20 second shot clock. And Aliyah Edwards is quickly up to check into the ball game for the Huskies. Makarov will come out. So both Nelson Dota and Edwards in the ball game here at the same time. From the corner, Beckers. She came, she was the inbounder, and she came to that corner ready to shoot the ball. Stop ball, stop ball! Get up, stop ball! Take it, take it, take it, take it! Edwards swipe for the ball. Edwards just caught the line with a toe. But relentless hustle from the freshman Edwards. Boy, she's fun to watch. against Creighton, UConn has done a good job of kind of hurrying up Xavier's offense. They're only shooting contested shots. Got him inside the line, Becker. Contested by Nelson Madonna, got a hand on the ball. Westbrook came up with it. Kristen Williams, for three. Well, that will really change this team if they can start knocking down those open threes. Ryan Decker, no. Nelson Adoda with the arrow. Rebound. This match inside. And that'll be an offensive foul. Good job, Lily. She was a little bit, she moving a little bit too quickly, but down the other end, look how active her hands were. Got away with a little contact. But so active on both ends of the floor. And then the pretty three. From Kristen Williams. Nelson Adota continues to just add to what she did against Creighton. It's good to see her come out and continue to contribute early in this game. Kristen Williams with the intercept. Beckers with the run out. We've seen over the years where they get off defense into offense. It's the first time we've seen it with this young group. Back into the ball game. Flies over Edwards. Too strong. Nelson Adota with the rebound. What a pass. Edwards and one. It's like, which way do you turn? They're, they have so many different weapons and different ways to hurt you. I didn't think she needed that dribble. But I think she did need it to, to gather herself. Gather the ball, too. So, Nelson Adona and Davina Westbrook come out of the game. Anna Mockrod goes back in, and we see Aubrey Griffin for the first time today. As Leah Edwards now tries to add the bonus. Oh, 11-0 run over the last minute and a half for the Huskies. Bobby Griffin. Close. That'll be off Bakker out of bounds. A 
Bradley Edwards intercepted the inbound pass headed for Megan Harkey. Some more of this super active defense we saw against Kurt the other night continuing for the Huskies here today. That'll be thrown away. That'll be UConn's ball. Xavier's trying to say no, they tipped it out. A discussion between the two officials, but they settled on being the Huskies ball. So, 26 point lead, two minutes to go, opening quarter. Kristen Williams. He knew that was going in. I can just tell with her body language, she's got a confidence about her right now. Griffin to Kristen Williams and got it. Timeout, Xavier. As they seek a solution to a superb performance by the Huskies in this opening quarter. Well, they had to stop the bleeding somehow, and you just don't know. It's coming from so many different places. You know, here the nice finish from Williams off the pass from Griffin. And I haven't seen UConn play this good in a really long time. Well, and this is the thing. If you think about the games we've done so far, we've seen almost a different defensive tactic. This now today, the trapping of the ball, the aggressive double team, and building off of the, the aggressive rolling off the screens, defending the screens, stopping the motion that Creighton uh, uh, normally does quite successfully the other night. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I think UConn is just locked in, and, and maybe it's that they've had more time. I mean, I, we played so many games here the last eight days, but their defense is really coming together. And, and you could tell they're having fun out there playing, but they're where they're supposed to be. They're making it incredibly difficult for Xavier to complete a pass. And you could just see the energy level out there is the highest in all the games we've done this year. Tried the float pass, overthrown, turned over. Huskies ball. You can still be a part of the action inside Gamble Pavilion this season with a fan cutout as part of the Bleed Blue campaign for UConn basketball. Check out Huskies, UConnHuskies.com if you'd like more information. Edwards, strong to the rim, and will get rewarded with a bucket and a foul. I mean, it is a clinic right now. I mean, UConn is doing, look at that. She gets her on the high side. And just so strong. Gets her here on that left shoulder where the only choice the defense has is to foul her. Kristen Williams with the long rebound. That'll be a tied up ball. It will stay with the Huskies. In this ball game already, Paige Beckers has gone over her season high on assists. We're not even done with the first quarter. That is going to be a travel. So the turnover by UConn gives Xavier a chance to break this nasty little run here. They're over their last four from the floor. And she said, like, you got to put the ball on the floor. I mean, obviously, those moves that Beckers used, they worked in high school in Minnesota. They're not working in Big East basketball. Blown away, and the Huskies ball. And another turnover for Xavier. Hey. Pitch, pitch! Kick out. To Griff Griffin to Beckers. Shot a little off the mark. Here comes Ariana Gray. He's not caught. He was sleeping there, but they did not pay for it. Xavier didn't find him. Grace puts a three in. Get her on the scoreboard in this one. Here's Kristen Williams off the screen. Griffin gets fouled as she was cutting into the lane and a nice feed there by Edwards. So Aubrey Griffin will shoot free throws with eight seconds to go in this opening quarter. Gray picks up the foul there. 
talked about Aubrey Griffin having her best game of the season two nights ago against uh, Creighton. And Gino talked about how they kind of limited what they were going to do with her on offense to put her more in her comfort zone. Obviously, playing to her strengths paid off quite well. And her defense, well, it speaks for itself. The athleticism is all over the court. Yeah, I mean, she's such a, a terrific defender. Anticipates so well. And, there's, and she doesn't have to be a huge scorer on this team right now. That's the beauty. Battlefield shot. Missed. And the first quarter will end with the Huskies on a 19-3 run over the last three minutes and 54 seconds. 38 to 7, the score at the end of one. Yikes. Ready for the start of the second quarter with UConn out to a 31 point lead here at Gamble in our poll today, presented by Cadillac. This is a good one. I promise you there'll be no controversy over the counting of ballots in this one. Uh, which former Husky do you consider the greatest in program history? Now, notice I said, I did not say there would be no controversy over the outcome of this poll. Uh, which among Husky fans you choose. I said there'd be no controversy over the counting of these votes. So go to sny.tv slash vote game and let us know what you think. Well, theme of that first quarter for UConn, defense into offense. UConn was... I, I haven't seen them play this good defensively, and I'm going to... I'm going to tell Gino that he's full of it because <laughs> he keeps saying that they can't guard anybody. Well, they had 22 points off of turnovers. And, I mean, look at that beautiful pass from Beckers to the streaking Nelson Adota. Nelson Adota doing it on the defensive end. Westbrook coming up with it. And Kristen Williams feeling comfortable from outside. Gino quite active himself on that sideline. Liking what he is seeing, and he should. We've got seven steals, have forced 14 turnovers, and as I said, 22 points off of those turnovers. Very efficient and active on the defensive end of the floor. 17% shooting for the Musketeers in that first quarter. Husky shot 71%. 15 of 21, 4 of 7 from outside. Kristen Williams leading the way in that first quarter with 12 points on 4 of 6 shooting. Uh, two assists and a steal. So we begin the second quarter with Beckers, Westbrook, Makarot, Nelson Agoda, and Griffin on the floor for UConn. Ray Clark, Dunham, and Prender, and Satterfield on the floor for Xavier. Inbound to Prender. UConn working on some zone defense. Xavier did a nice job of finding Prender and scoring. Oh, nice movement by Aubrey Griffin. How about the combination there? Nelson Adota to Griffin. Well, Griffin just moves well without the basketball, and Nelson Adota is a really good passer from that high post. Satterfield. That'll be a step and a turnover. Keaton, look, she passes the ball and then cuts hard. And I thought Nelson Adota was a little late on the pass, but it got there, and the nice finish wait, 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 wait. from Griffin. Turnover count is something. Nelson Adota with a clear left side to roll. <laughs> Thought that was the home rim. Foul will be on Kay Satterfield, I believe. That'll be her first. Get a move on your next Get the defense moving a little bit. Olivia, four of four from the floor in this game so far. And two for two at the free throw line. Come now in the two three zone. Shot from outside by Mia Clark. Her first points of the ball game. Beckers for three. And 
Westbrook intercepts the pass. Huskies look to run. Becker's out ahead of the pack. Oh, what the, how did she get that to the rim? A lot of practice. I thought she was going to trip over it when she tried to gather it up. She went up and over her head and made the bucket. It was great. All the way to the rim. Nelson Adota. No call, whether he had a track. Just got feet going a little too quickly before the ball hit the floor. So, an even scoreboard so far in this second quarter. Just good re recognition of where the ball is, good help. Nelson Adot is so good and always knowing where the ball is. Sneaks over and gets lots of blocks that way. And that gives people like Beckers and the guards the opportunity to go for it a little bit on the wing because they know if they do get beat, they got Nelson Adot. Travel by Morgan Sharks, who just came into the ball game for Xavier. It's important to, to note that this is a rebuilding year. Yep. For Xavier. Yeah, three and twenty-seven a year ago, already won as many games in this young season as they did last year. And this is Melanie Moore's second season, so she's got a lot of work to do rebuilding this program, but she'll do it. A great young coach in the game. And Westbrook will take an extra step. So we're trading turnovers here, uh, particularly by method of travel. And that's the frustrating part for Gino and his staff because they're doing so many good things and then don't literally shoot themselves in the foot and just keep walking. Great shot off the mark, rebound, ends up in the hands of Westbrook. Inside, Aubrey Griffin. Nice athletic adjustment. Six years. They <laughs> <laughs> cut off by Kristen Williams. Dunham over the top of Nelson Adoda. Play. What a finish by Dunham. Aliyah Dunham, senior from South Charleston, West Virginia. Nelson Adoda, up and under. Olivia just, when she catches the ball, she knows that she can score. That's a mindset I haven't seen on her before. Shot too strong, rebounded by Nelson Adoda, who will then get fouled. Sharp's bid from outside was off the mark. That is going to be Case Satterfield called for the foul. See, she wants the ball, called for a little bit late. Still had a chance to finish. She was open for like a week in there. <laughs> Aubrey goes to the bench. Leah Edwards back in the ball game for the Huskies. Nelson Adoto with the spin, the step back, no. See, that fadeaway is not her best shot. That's why she was short. See? She spun and she had to create some space. Fading away. So counting the nine for nine the other night, and Olivia's five for five start today. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the first time she's missed in two games, and that's the first shot that she's faded back like that. Oh, 
calls for the screen. Floating pass inside, looking for Olivia Nelson Adota, but she stopped where Westbrook, where Westbrook thought she was going to be. Yeah, look at the numbers. So 14 in a row from the floor. Well, because she's getting, it's the work she's doing before she gets the ball a lot of times. She gets the ball in that low post and knows where the defense is and, and makes great decisions. Fred Sharks gets that one to go. Steal. Nia Clark will go in the end for the bucket. Nice anticipation there by Clark. A little sloppy offense by the Huskies. Clark, one of the best players for this Xavier squad. Kind of a story similar to Avina Westbrooks. Basically, they didn't play for two years. Injury and a transfer. She's making the most of it now. Williams. Yeah. Feeling it today. Three of three from outside. 15 points. by Williams with the right hand. And another timeout, Xavier. Let's see, subtract that, carry the one. It's a big lead for the Huskies. Seymour of UConn undefeated 1995, presented by Cadillac, Tuesday, 9.30 p.m., only on SNY. Oh, that is funny. That is true, too. As an assistant on that bench, Nikisha, when he, whenever he told her to play point guard, she turned green. <laughs> oh, my gosh, that was funny. Of course, the Huskies' first national championship team, that 1995 squad. Jamel. And uh, very obvious that a good time was had by all in the making of that film. Yeah, great group. There's Jamel back as an assistant coach now with UConn, which, you know, I don't want to underscore how important Jamel has been to the development, not only of this team, but you look at Olivia Nelson Adota, there's a reason she's playing so well right now, and it's because Jamel Owen is on the staff. Olivia with that rebound on the Nia Clark miss. Three and a half to go in this second quarter. Ball knocked out of bounds. That was Lauren Waslison for Xavier making the knockaway. Huskies will inbound with 23 to, sh to a shoot. Everyone that's been in the ball game for UConn has scored three players in double figures already. Huskies are shooting 76%. It's going to be a foul on the floor. Gordon Kramer, her second foul. She tries to move Nelson Dota. Kramer, one of the toughest kids on this team. Yeah, because yeah, it's really hard to guard Aaliyah Edwards. She's so active and never stops moving in the paint. Deckers to Nelson Adota. Perfect pass. Be ready, she'll find you. Second, knocked away, here's Clark. Got to give Pranger credit yep. to keep the possession alive for Xavier. And Morgan Sharks, Sharks will drop the bucket. Six points, leading scorer for Xavier is Sharks. Oh, 
Pranger again defending Nelson Adota, and Olivia will commit the foul. Well, that was a senseless foul there by Nelson Adota, frustrated with the turnover. It'll be her second foul in this one. Coming up here, why this year's Young Huskies team will rely on redshirt junior Evita Westbrook. Both on the court and off. That'll be part of the UConn women's basketball halftime show presented by Ford. A couple of minutes from halftime here at Gamble Pavilion today. In a dominant first half for the Huskies. Inside, Pranger gets fouled on her way up. Courtney Franger, sophomore from Minster, Ohio. Her freshman year was about a 35% shooter. This year has been shooting over 50% as she begins to carve out her path with the Melbourne squad. So with two fouls, Nelson Adota will come out of the ball game. There's a good look at Franger. out of its misery. Yes. <laughs> call a walk, call three seconds, just call foul, whatever. But you can see UConn's offense has slowed down because they were getting so much out of their defense. And now that they're in a half-court zone, offense doesn't look as good. And Xavier's done a nice job in the half-court set. Sharks. Had Edwards running at her. Might have offered the shot some. Beckers tried to find Griffin on the run. Now Griffin and Beckers team up. Ball still loose. Good hustle down to the floor by the clock. Edwards defending. The toughness from Courtney Prager will draw the foul. Well, UConn got caught on the switch. Nice job by Xavier to take advantage. And the grit and the toughness of Prenger gets herself to the line again. Two free throws. in the second quarter after really struggling in the first quarter and now the Huskies come down having turned the ball over three times in the last two minutes into the final minute of this first half Martha Rock has it knocked away right to Christian Williams can't go to the three but the rebound goes back into the hands of UConn She is so good at the dribble, stop, and pop. What's that, On Makarov. And that will go over to the Huskies on the possession now after getting stuck. So 2.2 seconds to go. After what we saw on Seton Hall, I don't rule anything out here. <laughs> like I said, I didn't rule anything out. So, 33 point lead for UConn at halftime here at Gamble Pavilion as uh, the Huskies shot 75% from the floor, 60% from three in uh, the opening two periods. Three players in double figures for UConn at uh, the halftime mark. And Gino Oriema, the head coach, joins us now down uh, from courtside. Gino, what stood out to you most about those first two periods for your team? Um, 
I thought at the beginning, you know, we uh, uh, we were pretty active in in, in putting some pressure on uh, on Xavier to get the ball across half court, you know, I, uh, and that led to a lot of buckets down at the other end, and uh, and then we rebounded the ball great, um, and that get gets our running game going, and uh, you know we're pretty good at getting getting out in transition. So those two things probably. Um, you know, are the, are the two things that I think define that whole first quarter. Well, Gina, you've been telling us quite a bit lately that you guys can't guard anybody, but you, you played great defensively, particularly in that first quarter. And as you said, got such great offense out of it. Yeah, yeah, the first quarter we played really, uh, we played well defensively. Uh, you know, we forced them into a lot of mistakes. Um, you know, we're a really, really good defensive team when the other team throws the ball out of bounds. I think that's probably our best defense. Uh, so um, if we could get them to do that more often, I think our defensive efficiency will go will go way up. All right, Gino. Thank good you. luck in the All second right. half. Thanks. Right. <laughs> Head coach Gino Oriema in our interview with the coach presented by PC Richard and Son. Could not ask for a better start to this one on a Saturday matinee inside Gamble Pavilion. At the midway break, 33-point lead for UConn over Xavier. Sixty to twenty-seven inside Gamble Pavilion, UConn over Xavier. Welcome to the Ford Halftime Show, presented by your local Ford stores. Well, I talked about Avina Westbrook before tip-off today, and what these, this team has been getting from her with no seniors on this year's roster. We know this team's going to be relying on the redshirt junior to provide the young Huskies with a strong voice on the court as well as off. Hey, somebody's got to be in charge here to make sure that our facing is good. Okay, that the ball is moving. I think, you know, I have a big, uh, big leadership role. Um, and just doing whatever the team needs for me to do to get the job done. I have the most experience on the team, being the oldest on the team, and I really have to act like it day in and day out. Because um, I know I'm being watched. Yes! Good play, It's the way to talk to her. I think our players and I know our coaching staff just really admire Avina's toughness and her courage because she she spent almost the entire summer here uh, from March. She didn't go home right away because she was doing rehab and coming back from a knee surgery. You know, it's tough, but I think Avina will bring a toughness and an edge that we we may have been missing the last couple of years. Going through two surgeries when I only thought I was going to go through one. Uh, having my waiver being denied, you know, when I thought I was going to be able to play. It was a lot, but at the same time, I think it was a blessing in disguise. I was able to get healthy. I'm a healthier E, stronger mindset, so I'm, you know, I'm ready to get out there. I haven't played in a while. I think my last game was, what, 2018? But like I said, the ultimate goal is to win. So whether that's me, my my team needing me to, to cheer them on uh, for us to win, you know, that's, and if that's what I have to do, that's what I have to do. So. Uh, you know, I came here for the ultimate goal, um, as did everyone. Now the ultimate goal to add more banners to the rafters of Gamble Pavilion. Westbrook and the Huskies out to a 33-point lead at halftime today. Speaking of schedule, UConn and the Big East released the rest of the regular season schedule, so we've got the game at Villanova on Tuesday here on SNY at uh, 6.30. Then a unique back-to-back wraparound schedule just after around the New Year's rather with uh, at Marquette and then Marquette at Gamble so that'll be interesting and then back in a non-conference play against currently seventh ranked Baylor that is what's coming up for the Huskies second half coming up here at Gamble UConn and Xavier and a look at our first half stats brought to you by your local Ford stores uh, Huskies 75 percent shooting from the field outstanding three players in double digits you see the points in the paint the fast break points 
The second quarter actually pretty evenly played, but uh, a 31-point lead for the Huskies after holding Xavier to just 16% shooting in the first quarter has set the score margin where it is. 60-27, headed for the third quarter. Back to Gamble in just a minute. Teams back on the floor at Gamble Pavilion getting ready for the start of the third quarter, the Big East opener for Xavier and the Huskies. Uh, really, the first and second quarters were night and day different when you look at it. Uh, UConn with a 31-point lead at the end of one. They only won the second quarter by two. Three Huskies in double figures in this one, led by Kristen Williams, who had a stellar first half. She really did. She was aggressive from the start, and that's what you need from Kristen Williams. Don't necessarily settle for the long-range shot initially, but look at this. The great pass from Beckers on the break and the foul. And when... Kristen Williams can get her feet set on the break. She's money. She felt really good, felt really confident. And I just love the fast break opportunities and, and the way she scored. Those 17 points, they came in a variety of ways. And that's when they're at their best. Yeah, and and really the aggressiveness being the key that, that, that's been such a focus. Be aggressive right from the start, and she certainly did that today. Yeah, look, look, look. There's Nia Clark driving all the way in, blocked by Olivia Nelson Agoda to start the third quarter. Really good weak side help yet again by Nelson Adota. See, you see her there. She comes down from the top of the key. Boom. Really good understanding of where the ball is and where she needs to be. Olivia starts his third quarter with two fouls. That is going to be Makarov picking up the foul. Her second. And Xavier will inbound the ball with a 20 second shot clock. Ariana Gray. Wow. It'll be difficult for Makarov to stay with her on the dribble. Two big steps in that throwback over her shoulder. Pretty impressive. Nelson Adona will take it to the rim. I just love the way this kid just continues to build on the good stuff she did against Creighton. There you go. Clark, defended, going to be a foul called underneath. Thank you. And yet, a, a, another way, if you take away the three-pointer, which she made the other night, she'll drive past you. She's getting really good at figuring, figuring out and deciding when to and when not to. That foul was on Ayanna Thompson, so that is her third 44 for Xavier. She's guarding Nelson Adota now. Beckers. Tipped. Westbrook tipped it off Nelson Adota. Back to Beckers. Not a miss, but that's an offensive foul on Beckers. And she tried to create a little something there that just wasn't there. You like the aggressive take. It was a late call, too. Well, defender is entitled if they've established legal guarding position. Obviously, that was the interpretation there. Good three seconds after the play. <laughs> Round and out from Clark. The Huskies run on the miss. Williams. Wow. Really good take. Great, like, just great presence of mind to catch and face up and realize the middle of the lane was wide open. Ball fake got the defender moving. Open the lane. Round and out for Pranger. Williams, wide open and drains it. Things are coming together for UConn offensively. Hey, down, 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 down. Get over top of those. Dunham has it knocked away. 
goes right to the hands of Wasserson. Now 10 to shoot. Dunham back with the ball. Ray. Off the mark, out of bounds, turned over to UConn. This is a terrific play because watch this. She catches it on the run, faces up, realizes the defense overcommitted, and there was no help in the middle. And then this time, they didn't come out to stop her. And you, she released it so quickly, you knew that. She knew when the ball was in the air to her, she was gonna shoot. Kristen is equal to a season high in points in this game. Chance for more. Fouled by Gray. I, I heard Gina say, look for the ball after the screen, because Kristen said, Kristen Williams said a, a big screen to free open one of her teammates, and she didn't call, and eventually she turned around and got the ball thrown to her. So that will be the second foul on Ariana Gray. So see at the top of the screen, she sets a big, she sets a big screen, and then finally decides, oh yeah, wait, I'm open. I'm going to come to the ball. That is now 24 on the game for Kristen Williams. Her career high is 28. They are proving in, you know, four games thus far this year that they have a lot of options on the offensive end of the floor. That'll be a travel on Landecker. But isn't that what you want, right? Somebody's going to have the hot hand on any, any given night, or somebody's going to struggle on any given night. And it just makes it really difficult to, to scout them to say, okay, who do we want to take away? Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Decker's cuts. Nice feed for Makarov. That was a really pretty play. All around, great decision by Makarov, but what a cut and finish by Beckers. Dunham drives, high glass. Leah Dunham. Tend to shoot for the Huskies. Makarov will be called for travel. You know, we talk so much about the, the full court press and defense into offense, but here's some impressive half court offense. The nice read there and the good finish. So Paige Becker's now up to 14.6 a day from the floor in this game. Gray. Oh, just that's a, that's a cool bounce. Beautiful step through the middle by Gray. Westbrook all alone for three. And there will be a foul on Satterfield. And Satterfield, I give her credit though. I thought she got the ball. She even looked at the official at Joe Vasily and said, wait, I got the ball there. So heads up play. So Kay Satterfield picks up her third of the ball game. Yeah. Talked about what this team was going to need to get from uh, Avina. Yeah, she knocked down her open three. Gino said they will be, uh, you know, such a better team if she can consistently knock down threes. You know, she hit one from the corner a couple possessions ago, picked up the steal. Okay. 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 A little bit of everything. Substitution of Leah Edwards into the game for Anna Makarot. And a 45 point lead for the Huskies. 16 4 in this third quarter. And 
Wilson will draw the foul, trying to drive between defenders to the bucket. Impressive drive, getting through traffic, getting herself fouled and getting to the line. Lauren Waslison, the junior from Valencia, Pennsylvania. And a starter ever since she got to Xavier. Kristen Williams. So Ariana Gray goes to the bench for Xavier. And Waslison shooting here. Our next UConn women's game on SNY Tuesday night at Villanova. As the Huskies take on the Wildcats, we start with the Cadillac pregame show at 6.30, only on SNY. Good box out by Nelson Madrova on the miss. They run ahead. Edwards saves. And that is going to be a three-shot foul for Paige Beckers. Gets us to the timeout halfway through this third quarter. And the Huskies have it rolling again. Huskies on a 16-4 run in this third quarter. 45-point lead over Xavier halfway through. Our poll today presented by Cadillac. We asked you to vote on which former Husky you considered the greatest in program history. Survey says... There you go. D. Diana Taurasi. That would have been my vote. Yeah? It would have. Yeah. No disrespect to all the others, but that would be my vote. She just, she made everybody better. There you go. And, and isn't, isn't that what a true all-time great does. Yeah, it's part of it. Team leader. It's definitely a part of it. She scored a ton of points, won national championships, um, and just, you know, it's, and it's still one of the best players in the world. <laughs> and in the crowd, <laughs> so to speak, here at Gamble. So Paige Becker's here shooting three free throws. have to wear these masks now, the officials, so it's hard to see the ground underneath you when you're wearing it. Is that part of it? Good Lord. Satterfield works on Griffin. They'll call a foul on the floor on Aubrey. Without putting a formal inquiry into the supervisor of the officials, for the volume of travels we've seen called, I'd say it's probably a point of emphasis. Short range and in for, court, uh, for Megan Markey, rather. Players are rusty coming back into game action, and so are the refs. <laughs> Beckers. And that'll go off Edwards out of bounds and get turned over to Xavier. So here's one of those little areas, you know, subtle parts of the game, but as you look at your team trying to make progress, different personnel combinations in the game, can they keep up the level of performance that the starting unit did? Yeah, and that's that's the key that I think every team, every coach wrestles with every year. Certainly Gino and his staff do. And how Lock. do you keep your kids focused? Yeah. They're the nice block. That's one way to keep it focused defensively, right? Westbrook, victory. 
The other, the other hard thing that UConn has learned over the years, this is a younger team, how at 80-35 do you keep playing? Yeah. You keep playing the same way. But that's what the coaching staff is looking to see. That has never wavered. Clark again with another one of those under the basket overhead shots. Nice backdoor cut by Clark. Well, and that's what, one thing that makes UConn stand out is how hard they play all the time, regardless of the score. But the young guys have to figure that out. Beckers gets fouled on her way to the rim. I mean, they get the ball up the floor in a hurry. With efficiency and, yeah, Xavier, you want to get back and get back to the lane, but you have to know where the ball is and know where the shooters are. Westbrook was wide open. Anna Mockrock will check back into the game for Avina Westbrook, who will head to the sidelines, having just gone to double figures in scoring. Three of five, two of three from outside. Interesting, Avina did not wear a knee sleeve here today, which she normally does. They didn't have it on Thursday night either. What? Sometimes you take that off and it, it's, yeah. you forget about it, right? Yeah. Every time you're thinking about the injury, you take it off, well, maybe you're not thinking about it. Ariana Gray, no. Satterfield, nice feed underneath. That'll be an offensive foul. Satterfield's a good player for them. Oh, yeah, there you go. I mean, that was incidental contact, I thought. I think Edwards did a nice job selling it, no doubt. And Satterfield goes to the bench with her fourth foul of the ball game. Nice job by Edwards to not get a foul herself there. Beats it inside for Griffin. And they will call Lauren Washington for the foul. She's obviously puzzled by the call. As am I. That will be her fourth. This is something the Musketeers ran into in their game on Wednesday against uh, Valparaiso with some foul trouble as the game got into its later stages. Aubrey Griffin at the free throw line. Another nice game for Aubrey. Defense, but it was also good patient offense by Xavier. You got it! But that turn. The kid's only a freshman. The way she turns, she is so strong. Got the way out of bounds off of UConn. And that will stay with Xavier. Watch when she catches the ball. She feels the defense on her high side and knows how to turn hard and keep the defender on her back so there's no way that kid can block the shot. Clark will go to the rim. Nice left hand finish. Okay, that was a tough play. I mean, that, and it was defended pretty well by Makarov. So, you know, kids make really good shots. Makarov. On the floor. Not anymore. Here comes Sharps. You hear the yelling from the sidelines. Slow it down. Best 
Tristan Williams got a hand on the shot. Wasselson gets it blocked by Makarot. They will call the foul there. That will be her He says, checking his score sheet. Yes. So Hanna will come out of the game. So we're talking about uh, the two top scorers for Xavier, uh, Clark and Gray, and how frustrated they were in the first half. Clark's gotten herself up to double figures now. Gray's at nine points. So they're finding ways to get open here in this third quarter. Foul called underneath on Xavier. That is going to be on Clark. And with 27 seconds to go, it'll be Aaliyah Edwards to shoot free throws. Free throw shooting, another bright spot for UConn today. 75% from the line, 15 of 20. Those are the things that Gino Ariema just won't, he won't let down with. Like, you have to make free throws. You can't make them now. How are you going to make them at, a, at the end of the game when it's really close? Yeah. And they need the buckets. So shot clock is off. Down to the final 20 seconds of this third quarter. Good drive to the bucket by Townsend. Fouled on the way through. That will be... It might be on Aubrey, but we'll wait to see. It's hard to tell. Well, Kristen Williams, they call it on. Okay. That'll be her second. Tears have shot 70% from the free throw, free throw, free throw stripe today. Two there, six seconds for the Huskies. Beckers. And so at the end of three, Huskies add another eight to their advantage. 88-44 at Gamble. Uh, this one, a 44-point lead for the Huskies. Leading scorer, Kristen Williams. Olivia nelson Adota has a double-double. Mia Clark is the leading scorer for Xavier. And Paige Beckers with 17 and 9. Watch where she falls here. She looks to land on her hand and her wrist, right? And then throughout much of, maybe it's her finger, she just got taped up. There's Janelle. Who just taped up her finger. So who knows? It certainly is a contact sport. Yeah. And she hasn't come out of the game. I would imagine that finger would have to be broken. And probably has no intention. Here's Aubrey Griffin. Nice spin move. Gets her own rebound, gets fouled. That's where Aub Aubrey can do some work in that low post. Look, get the position, look at that. Feel the defense. I mean, but see, she's so athletic. I don't know if she really cares necessarily where the defense is behind her, because she can elevate over many. It's already four of five from the free throw line today with another yet to go. Five of six. Nine points on the day for the sophomore. Good kick out. And a wide open Wasserson.
<laughs> creating well, something on chaos. It ended pretty, but <laughs> was not a pretty possession. Oh, boy. Give Xavier credit, though. Really good defensive stance for almost 30 seconds. Gray gets through, gets the rebound, misses the ball, put back. Off the Edwards screen, Westbrook drains the three. She's just getting more and more comfortable out there. 13 today for Vina. Got it. This guy's still running hard. Nice pass from Westbrook, too. Maybe a foul underneath as Edwards tried to go up for the rebound. Our drive of the game is presented by Nissan. Nice pass. I mean, running the floor really hard. Westbrook passed it exactly where Beckers needed it. Didn't even need a dribble. So Paige Beckers with 19.7 of 11 from the floor. Nine assists in this one. Aliyah Edwards just picked up her third foul. And Mira McLean is into the ball game for the first time for the Huskies. Defended by Edwards. Great weak side help there from Edwards, or back line help anyway. And wisely did not commit the foul, just had her hands up in the air. So 10 to shoot for Xavier. Townsend. Nice take by Townsend. Got into some foul trouble early for Xavier. Here's Edwards, just everything. Another interesting lineup. Dupont has three freshmen on the floor, a junior and a sophomore. Yeah. <laughs> Running one hander by Terry Gross, and it falls. Strong finish by Gross. Into the outstretch arms of Edwards. Westbrook with a nice pass to Aaliyah Edwards, but she couldn't drop the shot. by Townsend, and Gross took it all the way to the bucket. Two plays in a row by Gross with a good finish. Beckers tried to feed Aaliyah Edwards, so it'll go off her hands and out of bounds. I don't think Edwards was 100% ready for that pass. And so Edwards will come out of the game as Beckers continues to feel that taped up hand. Oh, Drop to the floor earlier. Back into the game for Leah Edwards. Ball rebound off the gun and miss. And then Gross had the miss, and here come the Huskies. Markerot feeds a breaking near McLean. There'll be a foul called. On the floor. On the floor. Gross. 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 Mir McLean tried to get the nice inbounds pass. Nice pass in traffic. A little too much contact. Westbrook. 
It's often not a great idea when you catch the ball and then you take a dribble and then you shoot it. It's like an afterthought. Yeah. <laughs> you lost all the flow. Satterfield back in the ball game, going to the rim. Can't get the rebound. Beckers ends up with it. Well, they needed her back in the game. She provides so much offense for them. Good hands defensively by Xavier. Nelson Madonna. Neil McClain fights for the rebound. He'll come out of bounds into the Yukon bench and get us to a timeout just under halfway through this fourth quarter. A little helter-skelter play here. Huskies three from 100. Xavier on a 6-0 run in the last two and a half minutes. Halfway through this fourth quarter here at Gamble, the Husky huddle is missing. One person usually front and center in it. <laughs> Yeah, for some reason, he did not go in the huddle. He's been sitting there reading the stat sheet. So he did not uh, have a whole lot to say, apparently. Now, talked about, you know, as you get these different lineup combinations on the floor, trying to keep up the level of performance. And right now, fourth quarter is nine points apiece. Well, and, and that's the frustration. And we've seen it off and on over the years that you don't play the game the way it's supposed to be played and the way Connecticut basketball plays it. Well, who let you know? And I think that could be part of the message here. And there'll be another travel called on Satterfield. It's what it comes down to is, you know, they, they, they practice so hard, but that practice, I mean, not to use a cliche, but I'm going to, practice should make perfect. Westbrook, nice. Well, that's easier said than done, Yeah, because right? well, now you've got an opposition out there, but... It's just effort. What he's talking about is effort and decision-making, and that has nothing to do with talent. Satterfield, no, that won't go. Nelson Dota with the rebound. Beckers, no, gets her own rebound. Nelson Dota. That won't fall either. Mir McLean will get called for over the back. So turnover by the Huskies, who are one of their last seven shooting. Defensively, though, two and a half minutes since Xavier has scored. Nice all the way to the rim for Terry Gross. Gets her team up and screaming on the bench for the end one opportunity. I didn't even hear the whistle. It was under a mask. Yeah. <laughs> Here the help came late. Just wasn't there in time. Good aggressive take to the basket by Gross. She's had a productive day here. Gets the bonus. Was second on the team in scoring last year as a sophomore. Goes now up to seven points in this one. I'm gonna call Nelson Adota on the foul. The, yeah, the right arm pushed off a little. Our upcoming schedule presented by Toyota Tuesday night. The pre-Christmas run for the Huskies will be completed down at Villanova here on SNY at 6.30 p.m. They've released the rest of the schedule. Uh, it'll start with the wraparound the New Year games at Marquette and here against Marquette. Uh, television assignments and so on to be announced shortly. Blocked by Beckers. Makarov. Makarov with seven points on the day today. And that was 100. That snuck up on me, those triple digits. <laughs> it sure did. <laughs> 24 for Kristen Williams today. Here comes Avina Westbrook out of the ball game. Avina with 15, five of eight from the floor, plus four assists. 
Very good game for Westbrook. Freshman McKenna Scarlett. first points in college basketball today. Flow every single possession, something gets called, whether it's a walk, a foul, difficult to get into a rhythm. So the Edwards will shoot free throws. And substitutions first will come in. It will be Autumn Shasson will come into the game for the Huskies. Anna Makarov will depart with seven points on three of five shooting today. Double figures for Edwards. And, and Aubrey Griffin is going in because I thought, wow, you're going to have all freshmen out there right now. Aubrey will go in for Neil McClain. You got to have a, a sophomore, somebody out there. A little bit older, a little bit wiser. Satterfield. Huskies fight for the rebound. And they'll call Edwards for the foul as she knocked the ball away from Leyendecker. Zero for shooting. Oh, they call Gabriel on that. Okay. So that's the second on PF. For the Musketeers. I mentioned earlier, they already have more wins this year than they had all of last season. And their first two Big East games and the Crosstown rivalry game with Cincinnati were all shuffled by a COVID pause, so they're in a, a, a jam of a schedule. It's kind of just like the Huskies. And their kids, have they been on campus since July 7, and Melanie Moore told us, their coach, she said, listen, they're going home for Christmas. They need to get away, away from each other, see their families, so I'm sure they're looking forward to the break. Aubrey Griffin. Nice take to the basket. Good recognition that there was no one on that baseline side. Inbound pass to Lion Decker, and she will be fouled. And our player of the game is presented by Cadillac. Kristen Williams today. Terrific afternoon, Williams had. And she shot the ball from long range better than I've, shoot, I've seen her shoot in a long time. Very impressive right from the start. <laughs> 24 points for Kristen today on 8 of 11 from the floor, 4 of 5 from 3, 4 of 5 from the free throw line. And so we come down to a minute and a half to go in this one. Next up for Xavier Marquette at home Tuesday, then off until after Christmas. Decker's trying to get it inside through traffic to Edwards. Get to the rim by Scarlett. 
Shashi is there on defense. Now she'll get the shot. The dance rises, wouldn't fall. Easy, easy. All 12 people in the stands would have erupted if that went in. Telling her team, easy, easy, use the clock. Inside a minute to go. That is going to be a travel. Wish we kept a ta tally on how many of those we're going to get called today. Yeah, and I'm kind of glad we didn't. <laughs> it's it's, it's got to be double figures. Let's go, let's go. Well, final 30 seconds of this one. Meg, your take on what you've seen today from this Husky squad. I thought it was a great effort, great full court pressure defensively that turned into a lot of offense. I think Gino learned a lot about his team and the weapons that he has. Go, 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 go. Two Huskies fighting for the ball. Gabriel gets fired. Nice pass by Chasson. She could have shot that ball, the freshman. Gave it up to her fellow freshman. Nice job by the walk-on. That foul is on Satterfield, and that will be five on her. So the sophomore from New York City will exit the game. Two points on one of six from the floor. And uh, the five fouls for Satterfield. So here is P.F. Gabriel. Beckers, who will hold for the final horn. Well, a very uh, all-around score sheet for the Huskies today. And uh, UConn improves its record to 4-0 on this season and 3-0 in the Big East with a 106-59 victory over the Xavier Musketeers at Gamble Pavilion today. And the head coach, Gino Oriema, joins us now from down courtside. Gino, was that your team's best game to this point? Uh, I thought offensively um, we did some of, some of the best things that we've done since, the, since we started. Yeah, I thought those were some really good moments, some really good movements. Uh, you know, when, when you shoot the ball as well as we did that, that whole first half, you know, that makes, makes your offense look great. Um, you know, we got some work to do, uh, you know, uh, on the defensive end sometimes uh, uh, in the half court stuff. But uh, I thought I thought for the most part, the way the ball moved and, um, and you know, and the, and the quality of shots that we got. Yeah, that was probably one of the better ones. So, Chino, you had uh, Kristen Williams, you had wanted her to be more ass assertive. And, and I thought she really did come out two games in a row now. I thought she really shot the ball well and was aggressive going to the rim. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, th there's th there's only one way to, to, to be a really good player, and that's you got to have a, a certain mentality, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, it starts on the defensive end and carries over to the offensive end, and you figure out a way to, you know, to get yourself – uh, into the game no matter what, whether it's offensive rebound, get a drive to the basket, get a steal and get out in transition, you know, make a three, whatever the case may be. I just think that, uh, you know, the, the, the really good players, that's what they do. They, they score from every, you know, every spot on the floor, every different way. And uh, the last two games, um, you know, that's been, you know, that's been there. And, uh, and hopefully we can keep building on that. Gino, next up, down to Philadelphia and Villanova on Tuesday. An early thought on that one from you? Uh, well, you know, it's the first time that we will, you know, we will have played them, uh, you know, with a new coach. You know, Denise played for Harry. Um, so I, I don't expect it to be just like when Harry coached at Villanova. I don't know that it will be much different, but I'm sure it will be different. Um, you know, they're a much more offensive-minded team. I think they create more possessions. Uh, they got one of the best players in the in the Big East, uh, the kid Segrist. So, 
Um, it's never an easy place to play, and they really make it difficult for you um, at both ends of the floor. So, uh, yeah, no matter what, uh, no matter who's coaching, no matter what the deal is, it's you know, it's never an easy place to win at Villanova. Hey, at least you don't have to worry about tickets to give out down there, right, with your family, since <laughs> no one can go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Usually, you know, there's a big contingent behind the bench, uh, but uh, you know, we have to eat our. Uh, we have to eat our pregame, uh, you know, from box lunches inside our room. You know, Philadelphia's locked down pretty tight. Oh, you can't uh, even eat as a team. No, no. But um, I, I got a couple people sneaking some cheesesteaks and zaps <laughs> over to me, so I'll find my way to get some good food. Don't worry about it. All right, Coach. Congratulations on today. Thanks All for right. this. You got it. Gino Orama, after his Huskies score a win over the Xavier Muscat Musketeers by a 106 to 59 margin for uh, the Huskies today, uh, had a lot of different things happen. Paige Beckers had a career high in assists. Aubrey Griffin had a season high in points. And Kristen Williams had a season high in points and a season high in three-point field goals made. And Kristen joins us now from down courtside. Kristen, congratulations. A solid, solid win for your team. Solid performance by you. What do you think was the key to your day today? Thank you. Um, you know, I've been struggling a lot with my shot lately, so it felt really good to just knock some in. Um, Paige did a great job of getting the ball up the floor, and I thought we had a lot of energy today. Kristen, great job. How much do you think, you know, your defense and what you guys were able to do in that full court and and create some turnovers, how much did that give you energy on offense? Yes, Ian Page did a great job of trapping the ball early on, and we got a lot of steals and got out in transition. So it started off really well, and it just played out for the rest of the game. <laughs> great. Kristen, when those first few shots go in, what changes? Is it confidence? What What's different? for you on the floor? I mean, it's like a spark. Um, once the first two go in, I mean, um, the rest start falling. So um, that's my go-to. I try to, you know, make some early on and continue throughout the game. And your partner in crime, the Olivia nelson Adota, two games where she, we, do you, do you guys sense it? Like when, when I see her now, when she catches the ball in that low post, right? Mm -hmm. She's unstoppable. What is it? Is it a mentality? Is it you guys getting her the ball in the right spot? What is it? I mean, she put in a lot of work on the off season. Um, she's been grinding in the gym. So once we throw it in the paint to her, I mean, she she scores. So we're we're gonna keep giving her the ball. <laughs> Smart, <laughs> Kristen. You guys had nothing but practice for a long, long time. Now you've had yes. a lot of games in a short period of time. Yes. <laughs> How are the legs? How's everybody holding up? Um, everybody's doing well. Um, we're finally getting our legs up under us. Um, you know, we have an off day tomorrow, so we're going to take advantage of it. Um, but everybody's doing pretty good. Good. Uh, great game today. Congratulations. Thank you. Kristen Williams, 24 points today on 8 of 11 shooting, 4 of 5 from outside. The leading scorer in a dominant Husky win over Xavier. Saturday matinee inside Gamble Pavilion goes the way of the Yukon Huskies. Final score 106 to 59. Huskies led by Kristen Williams today, who did a little bit of everything. Yeah, she played so well. Here, the great aggressive drive and the good find. And this is where she's at her best, when she can catch the ball in that half court set and drive to the basket. And then if she does that, when you try to come off, she'll hurt you from long range. So I thought she had everything going on, which really said that mentally she was really locked in right from the opening tip for sure so many things to look at when you look at the final stat sheet here six huskies in double figures the shooting percentage 63 percent from the floor 55 percent from the field 78 percent from the free throw line if there's any one last thought that you came away from watching this team today it was what well i think they got better i think they got better as a team i think we saw just another dimension of what they can do when it was their full court defense and turning that into offense. They have other, you know, different people that are stepping up and stepping into the, what their roles are going to be. And they may change a little bit, but I think for the fourth game after a bizarre fall yeah. and off season, yeah. I think this team is getting a lot better. And I think what we saw today 
will pale in comparison to what we'll see in February. You just want your team to keep continuing to build toward March, right? Well, the Huskies took another step in building that foundation toward March today with a tremendous performance inside Gamble Pavilion. 106-59 is the final score. Next up, it's Tuesday night down in Philadelphia. The Huskies visit the Wildcats, and our coverage begins with the Cadillac pregame show at 6.30 p.m. here on SNY. For Megan Kulmo and our entire crew, Alan Bestwick, thanks for joining us today from Gamble. Huskies win over Xavier.